Hello everyone. Welcome back to another session of RNA biology and we were here in the previous class that the microRNA biogenesis and their function and we know the microRNA has got two major phases. One is their production in the nucleus that is in the form of primary microRNA which is matured through the pre microRNA by the action of drosha and DGCR8 and goes into the cytoplasm which is further acted upon by DICER and FMRP and which can act into onto mRNAs and prevent the translatability or affect the stability of this mRNA species. In, in a simplistic form we can say microRNAs are meant for preventing the availability or the formation of protein from an mRNA. So, the transfer RNA and microRNA processing and export can be seen in this cartoon. You can see the entire side section is the nucleus and the bottom below this line is the cytoplasm which is clearly mentioned here and transfer RNA we saw there are three species of transfer RNA incomplete and complete and amino acylated they pass through the nuclear pore complex and function in the cytoplasm whereas mRNA that can be exported through unique set of proteins and the microRNAs are present either in the form embedded inside the intron of mRNA or there can be dedicated microRNA that can be produced by polymerase 3 and polymerase 2 and polymerase 3 participate in the production of microRNA intermediates which is processed by drosha and dgcr 8 and they become pre microRNA which in turn is exported via export in 5 and eventually it will find dicer in the cytoplasm and the exportin is released and this microRNA can function onto target via the RNA induced silencing complex called RISC. Let us now understand the export of SNRNAs. What are SNRNAs? SNS, SNRNAs are spliceosomal SNRNAs that are synthesized as precursors and we call them as pre-SNRNAs by polymerase 2. The transcription is via RNA polymerase 2 and we know they are U1, U2, U4, U5 and they require, they acquire a 5 prime cap that constitutes the signal for nuclear export. So, the pre-SNRNAs are not polyadenylated but exhibit specific 3' prime end processing. Of course, every SNRNA need to be protected from the nucleus and their way of functioning is not via polyadenylation. So, there is a protein called CRM1. It has another name, exportin 1. We have seen exportin T earlier and we also have seen exportin 5. Here we are talking about exportin 1 and this protein has another name CRM1 which is a general protein exporter which recognizes leucine rich type NES on proteins associated with this SNRNA and the CRM1 protein is export receptor for SNRNA but it does not bind SNRNA directly. So, it binds the SNRNA via another group of proteins. So, the cap binding complex CBC and the NES containing adapter protein FACS recognize the 5 prime cap of the SNRNA. So, these two molecules the cap binding complex and the NES containing adapter protein FACS they recognize the 5 prime cap of this SNRNA. Though the phosphorylation of FACS, we know phosphorylation change the structural property and functional property of a target protein. Phosphorylation of FACS in the nucleus is required 
for the recruitment of CRM1. We saw CRM1 is similar to exporting uh, this carrier family protein and the exporting one is the another name. So it is helpful. The phosphorylation of facts is helpful for the recruitment of CRM1 and the RAN GTPS. We know RAN GTPS cycle by now and to the CBC bound SNRNA complex. So the SNRNA when it is bound with the CBC can be pushed into the cytoplasm. So let us see in detail about the export of SNRNA. In the cytoplasm, the GTP hydrolysis of RAN and the dephosphorylation of the FAX occurs because FAX protein is phosphorylated in the nucleus. And another protein called survival of motor neuron SMN complex that can facilitate the assembly of heteroheptameric ring of SN protein. We saw in the earlier class how the SM rings are assembled during the maturation of SNRNA. On to this SNRNA which induces the trimethylation. It comes from the nucleus monomethylated and now it induces the trimethylation of the cap, pro, cap nucleotide. The, the cap uh, guanosine monomethylated now become trimethylated and exonucleolytic removal of the 3 prime trailer sequence. There is no polyadenylation but there is exonucleolytic removal of the 3 prime few bases from the SNRNA that takes place in the cytoplasm. The mature SNRNAs are then re-imported back to the nucleus. Once these features are done, the trimethylation, trimming of the uh, 3 prime end and if such maturation event has taken place in the cytoplasm, these mature SNRNAs are re-imported or re-localized back to the nucleus because they have to function in the nucleus. So now let us understand the export of mRNAs. We know mRNAs do not use the RAN GTP at all. They do not require the RAN GTP cycle. So mRNA is transcribed in the nucleus where it is processed and packaged into messenger ribonucleoprotein and we call it as mRNP complexes. So during transcriptional elongation, the nascent mRNA transcript is bound by a number of factors including heterogeneous nuclear ribonucleoprotein and we call it as HNRNPs and majority of these proteins are meant for substrate recognition by downstream enzymes and also for protection. In bacteria, you know, coupled transcription and translation, the association of ribosome prevents the degradation of this mRNA. But whereas such a thing doesn't happen in the nucleus, so HNRNP become handy for the survival of this RNAs. After capping, splicing and 3' prime end cleavage and polyadenylation onto this mRNA, export receptor which is formed of a multi-protein complex. What are those protein? MEX67, MTR2, NXF1, NXT1, TAP P50, TAP P15 heterodimer. So TAP P15 is a heterodimer and they bind to the RNA. So the export receptor is not single form like exportin T or exportin 1, not like that because mRNA require a group of protein which act as the exportin because of the unique secondary structure and unique molecular weight, higher molecular weight of the mRNA. This export receptor does not depend on the RAN GTP gradient, which we already have seen uh, before. It docks at the nuclear pore complex through a discrete class of NPC protein and we call it as FG NUPS or FG NUPS because they have FXFG that means X stands for any amino acid F stands for phenylalanine and X stands for any amino acid and FX and then another repeat GLFG that is glycine leucine and then phenylalanine glycine repeats so this FG noops have FXFG repeat and GLFG repeats so the mRNPs are targeted to and translocate through the nuclear pore complex. 
so all molecules all rna molecule cargo they go in and out of the nucleus through the nuclear pore complex however the protein associated with individual cargo and the proteins of the npc nuclear pore complex they interact can vary so depending upon which species you are handling the nuclear pore complex interaction can vary so coming back to mrna export so mrnp complex are important because that will protect the rna and also provide stability and this complex involve trex complex and tho associates with pre mrna during the transcription and another protein sub2 which is a helicase and yra1 and tex1 so trex is a protein tho is a protein sub2 is a protein yra1 is a protein tex1 is a protein and another complex in the nuclear pore complex is mex67 and mtr2 complex in the nuclear pore complex is important in the um, movement of the cargo that facilitate the export of mrnas so mrna export from the nucleus to the cytoplasm is a complex process and it involves trex tho sub2 yra1 tex1 and also mex67 mtr2 complex in the npc so these are associated with the rna and these are present in the npc nuclear pore complex let us see step wise the export of mrna the mrnps are directionally released into the cytoplasm that means it doesn't come from the cytoplasm to the nucleus it is always nucleus to the cytoplasm directionality of cytoplasmic release is determined by mrna export factors such as dbp5 which is an atp dependent rna helicase you know importance of helicase because they have to maintain proper structure if structure tweaking of secondary structure tweaking of an mrna is needed helicase has to come into action and another protein dbp5 which is a helicase and gle1 which is a soluble inositol hexa kis phosphate that is also known as insp6 and so three proteins dbp5 gle1 and a soluble inositol hexa kis by phosphate known as insp6 three proteins dbp5 gle1 and insp6 that provides the directionality via the export factors and gle1 is asymmetrically located in the cytoplasmic nuclear pore filaments that means it look doesn't look like a mirror image they are distributed asymmetrically and insp6 bound gle1 stimulates the atps activity of dbp5 which converts dbp5 from an atp to adp bound state now you remember the role of rand gtps and the gap protein jeff protein like that which were contributing to the utilization of gtp energy same way the insp6 bound gle1 stimulates the means acting like a gap protein stimulates the atps activity of dbp5 so dbp5 is not using gtp but it is using atp for the energy purpose which converts the G dbp5 from an atp to adp bound state so the energy can be utilized for the transport purpose a conformational change induced by dbp5 atp to dbp5 adp switch gives directionality many a times you may have seen it like in many places where you go where you want to control where you want to control the movement of people you will see some doors some gates which open only one direction it cannot open other way around you can move from one place to another because this door cannot open opposite so you just to push the door it like many a times in laboratories you can see in dark rooms when you are entering into dark room you enter then you will enter into a small chamber and you twist the door then the outside door will be closed and it will open into inside so it's like a circle door so they are kind of unidirectional so many such doors you can see it so here this conformational change of dbp5 atp to dbp5 adp bound 
which gives a confirmation change so that it cannot go other way around the rna cannot come from the cytoplasm to the nucleus but it can go from nucleus to the cytoplasm this is what the directionality mean which is structure induced directionality so remember dbp5 atp and dbp5 adp bound state decides which direction the rna should go so dbp5 atp bound is in the nucleus dbp5 adp is in the cytoplasmic side so this direction structural change allow the cargo to move into the cytoplasm as soon as the 5 prime end of the transcript entered the cytoplasm cytoplasmic factors bind that is cbc is now replaced with elf4e and the ribosomes bind and the translation begins before the entire mnrnp has been extruded from the nuclear pore complex because once an rna is pushed into the cytoplasm it is vulnerable for degradation even if it is bound with many proteins because many nucleases are there so as soon as it is entered the cbc is now replaced by with elf 4e and elf 4e cbc stands for cap binding complex and elf 4e and the ribosomes come together and they will continue to start the translation process ribosomes assemble one after the other and the translation begins so we should understand that similar to what you saw in bacteria coupled transcription and translation here as soon as an rna comes out of the nucleus it is situation is similar to the coupled transcription and translation just that transcription is already completed but it is something similar because where the release is from the dna here the release is from the nuclear pore complex that is the only difference so if you see the mrna export both in yeast and metasova they have common features except that in metasovan there will be plenty of more factors coming into picture so in this cartoon you can see the recruitment and export of a bunch of proteins is very like you can see here cbc here here also you can see cbc which is cap binding complex or the 7 methyl guanosine cap is protected by the cbc proteins and they are released out like you can see here its release is happening and the cbc is immediately recognized and it will start the translation process and the translation initiation takes place once elf4a is bound because cbc is now replaced by elf4a and same way you can see in metasovan also the same principle uh, takes place and it is important to note that some of this fused exon here you had exon intron exon intron is there once exon is fused you have some ejc exon junction complex and exon junction complex are kept on the rna on exon exon boundary with a purpose because we will see them you keep this in mind because they have become handy in non sense mediated decay or the rna decay but time being you remember exon junction complex contains protein that stay bound onto the rna until their first translation is completed after their first round of translation that will be lost and that is why the premature stop codon has to be sensed and detected so compared to yeast metasovans also have more or less the same type of uh, you know nuclear pore um, complex and their function and cbc is there elf4 is replaced and uh, you know and also this um, cargo is detached here also you can see the cargo is released and detached and this process continues smoothly and if you look closely the mrna export through the nuclear pore complex this is the chromatin what you are seeing and the chromatin contains a lot of proteins and the rna polymerase to moves across and the rna is produced and the capping has taken place and a bunch of protein that is part of this thaw trex complex you saw earlier they have assembled onto it and both um, this thaw and trex complex proteins are important to be recognized and some of them are recruited like mtr2 um, 
MAX67, they also joined the group and they are important for the recognition by the nuclear power complex protein. You can see here this YRA1 interacts with MTR2, MTR with MAX67 and also a bunch of other protein like SAC3, TSP1. Like you can you see here Thor Trex complex, here you see Trex2 complex. Trex2 complex is present in the nuclear pore complex. So this is the nuclear pore complex and these proteins are projecting into the nucleoplasm and these protein complex interact with these members and slowly passing it through the nuclear pore and this cap and CBC is not shown here and CBC also will be occupied here and that will be exposed and that is replaced by ELF4A once it reached into the cytoplasm. Now we will see ribosomal RNA export. How ribosomal RNA is getting exported from the nucleus to the cytoplasm. The ribosomal subunits are assembled in the nucleus and are transported to the cytoplasm by multiple export receptors because ribosomal RNA is not one species just like mRNA there are plenty of different type and size and length uh, and secondary structure ribosomal RNAs are there and ribosome biogenesis requires the transcription of precursor ribosomal RNA we call it as pre rRNA and from the ribosomal genes in the nucleolus that is looking like a heavily pycnated uh, part inside the nucleus. So nucleolus is a part inside the nucleus where the ribosomal RNA biogenesis is taking place as well as the synthesis of ribosomal proteins in the cytoplasm and subsequent import of this ribosomal proteins into the nucleolus. Many times these proteins are produced which are supposed to interact with the ribosomal RNA. They are produced in the cytoplasm. They are imported back into the nucleus so that this freshly made ribosomal RNA can assemble with them and that is what happens in the nucleolus. So the nuclear export machinery is not recruited at early stages of pre-ribosome assembly that is pre-60s and pre-40s in the case of eukaryote or metasomans. So this particle so the machinery is not recruited but it will happen eventually. So 60s subunit export is conserved and it depends on the RAND GTP, RAND system that is RAND GTP, RAND GDP uh, cycle and it also make use of a CRM1 export receptor. Another protein NMD3 which is a conserved nuclear export containing protein like I told you in the previous class nuclear export signal need not necessarily be present in the RNA primary or secondary structure it can be present on specific sequences of the protein associated with them that is recruited to the pre-60s particle in the nucleoplasm and serves as the adapter protein. So CRM1 is dissociated from the NMD3 adapter by RAND GTP hydrolysis and then two more proteins that is MEX67 and MTR2 additional export receptor also joins this complex and finally there is an ARX1 which is the axillary protein export factor that is recruited to the pre-60s particle concomitantly means subsequently with NMD3 and MEX67 MTR2 dimer and they directly interact with the FG nucleophorin. So it is a systematic step where CRM, CRM export receptor NMD3 MEX67 MTR2 heterodimer and ARX protein. So they come together and they assemble for the 60s ribosomal RNA complex formation in the nucleus. So ribosomal RNA export if you see closely this is the nucleus side this is the cytoplasmic side and this is the nuclear pore complex. You can see pre 60s they assemble MTR2 and MEX67 and NMD3 and also ARX1 they join together to form a complex and the RAND GTP joins and CRM1 also joins and you end up getting a huge complex and this RAND GTP undergoes the GTPS in the cytoplasm once it comes out of the uh, once it comes out of the nucleus in the cytoplasm and you end up disassembling of these proteins 
and you end up making a 60s ribosomal protein complex that is ribosomal rna plus permanently associated protein which is present in the 60s ribosomal uh, structure or subunit and you can see more in detail about this in this review and you can also see this is the enlarged structure where you have the nuclear pore complex and you can also see how individual proteins like you can see here nmd3 crm1 how they interact with fg proteins present in the lumen of this nuclear pore complex so that their movement is slow and steady rather than just falling uh, into a well or falling from the uh, roof of a building like that it shouldn't happen that fast because it will disassemble it has to be smooth that is why the fg proteins becomes handy for this transport so we will study more in detail about various diseases that is associated with uh, you know um, export of the rna in the next class thank you